like YouTube is streaming. How's Facebook? Yeah? Oh, did YouTube? Oh, okay, it says live. Uh, yeah, tell me in the chat if YouTube actually was going that whole time. Hopefully it was. It looked like it was kind of stuck on a screen. Uh, oh, boy. I wish I had seen that sooner. Let's see. Did it just finally start? <laughs> Twitch has been fine. Okay, I think there was a problem on YouTube. Is that right? That's going to be a pain in the neck. Yeah, will someone confirm on YouTube when things started or stopped? Only just now you see me. Oh, wow, that's interesting. The, uh, the YouTube took its time actually going to live. I thought it had gone live. Just got the alert. All right. Uh, well, this will be a weird one. I'm going to redo everything from scratch. How about that? We lost 15 minutes. Yeah, that, that's the whole show. Uh, we can do this, sure. Uh, some, some aspects of this we won't get, but uh, here we go. 1.15 on YouTube. All right. From the top, then. You ready? Take two. Welcome to the show. It is me, JP, and you are here for the encore performance of JP's product pick of the week because YouTube uh, went really weird. And I'm not sure how healthy it is. It's showing me some, some warning signs here. Uh, so hopefully it's, uh, it, it's going to, fingers crossed, perform well enough to stream this. Uh, and I'm going to run through this a second, second time. Uh, so... Here we go. Yeah, I can't change the price for the second 15 minutes, but, but hopefully we'll stay on this price uh, for the product pick. So welcome to the show on product pick of the week. I pick a product. I give it to you at a deep, deep discount, and we do a little bit of a demo. This is the URL you're going to want to head to if you want to go find the product, take a look at it, and you can watch the show embedded right inside the product page. Uh, so before I tell you any more about it, I'm going to have Lady Ada give us her new, new, new segment on today's product pick. So take it away, Lady Ada. So we wanted to have stuff that plugs directly into a USB-C port. We wanted to first find a really good USB-C plug, something that has all the pins that we need and is like edge mounted. So you can you know plug a device straight in to a USB-C port, um, but doesn't require an external case to keep it mechanically stable. So this is a nice plug because it has a little bit of like a through hole tab but still has plenty of pins and is fairly easy to solder, not too expensive. And it has the power and data pins plus the CC1 pin. Um, a lot of people ask, hey, wait, don't you need the CC2 pin? No, not on the plug. The plug side actually only uses one side of the USB-C connection, that's normal. And then on the USB jack side, it detects which CC pin is connected and that way it knows which direction it's plugged in. Um, it should be symmetric. If it isn't, there's something kind of messed up about your computer. Um, but this way it can tell like if it's plugged upright or, or down ways. Like I said, 99.99% of the time, your computer or host device will connect both together. Um, and you can also disconnect the CC1 pin if you want this as a host USB. So you want to measure the 
uh, resistance so you can remove the 5.1K. But this, um, you know, what's nice is you can plug it right into a um, USB power delivery and it'll give you five volts. And then if you want uh, data pins from a computer or to connect the data pins of a, a client device, you're good to go. So I think that this kind of covers everything people need for a USB-C plug. Um, we're trying it out. And if this works out, we'll make some devices that can plug right into USB-C. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, so this right here, that's my product pick of the week this week. It is the USB-C plug breakout. So this is perfect for projects where you want to build a little circuit. You want to use USB 2.0 or USB 1.1, and you want to uh, maybe get just five volts and ground if you're just powering a small circuit and you want a tiny little convenient way to plug that in with a nice sturdy connection into USB-C ports. So uh, by way of a demo, what I want to show you is, let me jump to the down shooter here. Uh, and yeah, that'll work. Let me, let me zoom out a bunch here. So what I've got set up is a USB wireless mouse. So this uses a little 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle to connect to your computer. As you can see right now, uh, I have a, let me put my cursor over, over the uh, product page there. Uh, you'll see with this mouse, it's doing nothing. It comes with a USB type A dongle, which looks something, something like that. That sort of dongle is what plugs in. So kind of big and kind of definitely USB-A. If you've got a USB-C port you want to use, uh, what you can do is gut the thing and connect it right to our board. So this is the, uh, the little controller and antenna that uh, is the PCB from the original, and I just pulled that out of it. Uh, and I have soldered that up to the four pins on the breakout. You can see I've got a little Kapton tape and some heat shrink on there. Uh, but essentially, I can plug this into my computer. I'm just using a little extension there. Uh, so that's now plugged into USB-C, and you'll see my mouse cursor working on there. And probably a little easier to see is the fact that I can scroll using this wireless mouse. Uh, it being USB-C, I can also flip that over and use it in either direction because it's symmetrical. So once again, cursor's moving and the scroll wheel is moving there. So I've got uh, a, essentially I've modified the mouse dongle from this, from USB-A over to USB-C and all is happy and good with the world. Uh, now I had previously done a little more with the tape and, and heat shrink tubing uh, and even the original little end cap so that it's a more, um, robust solution, a little more ruggedized, but I peeled that stuff off just so I can show you how this works and I can essentially reheat shrink tube that. Uh, if I give you a little closer look here, I'm try to get that focus a little better and I'm gonna zoom in just on that, uh, that device there. Let's uh, get that focus there. Okay, so if I peel off some of this tape here. You can see better the type of connection this is, there we go, uh, is the four uh, little PCB contacts that originally went into the USB-A port are hidden under this, uh, this heat shrink. And I have four little wires. I like to use this type of um, very small silicone stranded wire. And there's a fairly standardized color set of uh, green for data plus, white for data minus, red for uh, voltage, and black for ground. So I have those connections there going to my little uh, board from the breakout. So that gives me a nice little neat package there. But that could be any circuit you imagine. Uh, for a little bit of a, a better look pre-surgery, this is a different device, but this is another uh, USB device. This is actually something that our uh, good friend Todd Kurt, Toddbot makes, which is a Blink-1, and it is a USB-A programmable uh, NeoPixel or RGB LED pair. Uh, and you can see here right, right at that connection there, there's four solder points, that's what you would if you remove this, and it's, it's a pretty destructive process because you have to peel open these types of uh, 
USB A cases with some pliers and then desolder some things. But you can see you get down to a pretty small board there, which again could be uh, soldered onto our USB A, or rather our USB C connector, and uh, and you've kind of moved that into the into the USB C world. Um, so I will say if you uh, are looking at things like USB thumb drives, those are usually USB 3.0, this isn't gonna handle that. That's more, uh, more wires, more connection, more um, concerns about wire lengths and impedance matching, uh, as we all know. So, so you can run into trouble trying to use high speed stuff like USB 3 here, but you can definitely do USB 2 things like mouse connections, keyboard connections, make your own little tiny circuits and, uh, and other gizmos that are, that are USB data or even just power. Um, so this is, as I mentioned, the product page. You can head here, it's product ID 5978. Uh, we don't have a learn guide for it because it's, it's, there's not a lot to it, uh, but we do have in a couple of learn guides that use it for projects, there's a USB-C dock the Ruiz Brothers built, and uh, here it is. Here it uses a USB-C plug as well as a um, USB-C jack in order to make a little stand. Uh, and these are the, the connections here uh, that are going from USB, USB to USB, basically. Uh, and let's see, I, I actually, I, I wanna give credit to the original um, idea for that mouse dongle. Let me just run to a URL real quick. Where'd you go? One second. Mm, yes, this is sure. Uh, oh, did I not? Yeah, I don't have the URL right here. I should be able to bring that in as a screen recording. Let me show this real quick. So this is a very similar dongle and very similar process that I followed. Uh, I'll put this link in the notes. It was from a uh, Post on X by the Jake Nixon. And there you go. Nice small little package, plugs into USB-C, ta-da, and it works. Uh, so that, uh, that was the inspiration for that. I'll put a link to that. I'm also gonna do a little write-up on this um, in case people wanna follow along. I took photos uh, along the way as I put mine together and had it uh, nicely, neatly heat shrinked so that it's a little, little more robust. Um, so let's see, did I miss anything? Sorry, I had to redo the whole show because the YouTube didn't, want to launch at first. Uh, this, again, is the URL you want to go to. Here are some nice close-ups there. Uh, I didn't mention, but Lady Ada did, did it has the 5.1K uh, resistor that is used to show this to a USB-C uh, receiving side computer, that this is a, uh, a plug end of a device. Uh, so you can leave it alone for the type of use I did where we're just connecting data plus and minus ground and power, uh, or you can connect up a different resistance level by cutting that uh, jumper there that you see and uh, connecting up your own CC1 cable to another resistance value so you can um, tell it different, different uh, USB port or plug side um, messages. So let's see, any questions over in the, in the Discord or the YouTube chat? That's uh, how I find out things, like I wasn't broadcasting the whole first time. Let me check the messages over in YouTube. Um, Zoe Sherry asks, do you think it'd be possible to use something like this to clone a USB Bluetooth dongle? So this doesn't have any, any uh, really any circuitry on it. It is just a physical connection, so if you, um, 
cloned your USB dongle or created a microcontroller project on one side, maybe it's on something small like a um, Cutie Pie, you could potentially connect this to the Cutie Pie by desoldering the existing connection and, and turn it into like a Trinky. Um, but it might be easier to use something like our Trinkies, which are designed to plug in, basically a plug-in microcontroller. Um, let's see, other questions? No? Okay. Well, thanks for putting up with, uh, with the technical shenanigans, but I think that covers everything. So that is my product pick of the day today. It is the USB Type-C plug breakout. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been JP's product pick of the week. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.